In this video, we're gonna talk about the solubility of organic molecules. And I'm gonna start with a little refresher. First of all, when molecules are soluble with each other, that just means that they can dissolve with each other or they can mix together with each other. They combine with each other really well. And one of the ways that we have to predict the solubility of two molecules is the saying, like dissolves like, which you might remember from your general chemistry class. Like dissolves like just simply means that molecules that have similar or like polarity will dissolve with each other. So this means that polar molecules will dissolve with other polar molecules and nonpolar molecules will dissolve with other nonpolar molecules, but we will not see mixing between polar and nonpolar molecules because they are not like each other. So let's make a list of what we would expect to see or what we would look for if we were trying to classify a molecule as being polar or nonpolar. Because obviously in order for us to know if two molecules are soluble with each other, we need to know if those molecules are polar or nonpolar. Polar molecules um, that we encounter in organic chemistry are water, it's a polar molecule, or molecules that have fewer or less than six carbon atoms as long as they have, so and, and this is a must, and also a nitrogen or an oxygen atom. At least one, they could have more than one. Those are polar molecules. Nonpolar molecules are gonna be molecules that have only carbon and hydrogen atoms, no oxygens, no nitrogens, or molecules that have more than six carbon atoms, no matter you know, whether they have nitrogens or oxygens. Nonpolar molecules are often described as being soluble in an organic solvent. So you might see a problem like, you know, saying which of these molecules is soluble in an organic solvent. And that's just a fancy way of saying which of these molecules is nonpolar. Polar molecules have the same kind of like trick wording. Polar molecules are often described as being soluble in water or H2O. Uh, so when you're being asked to classify molecules as polar or nonpolar, you're really just looking at the structure of the molecule and making a decision, you know, like what exactly am I looking at here? So for example, if you gave something like this and you were asked a question like, uh, is this molecule soluble in organic solvent or is it soluble in water? The way that you would figure it out is just by asking yourselves, is this polar or nonpolar? Um, there is an oxygen atom in this molecule, so that means it's not this type of molecule. It's not only carbon and hydrogen. So the other thing we want to ask ourselves is, okay, well then how many carbon atoms does it actually have? And this requires us to actually interpret that line structure, see what's going on. Looks like we have five carbon atoms. Five carbon atoms with an oxygen atom means that it's polar, and so that means that it is soluble in water. This gives me a good opportunity to talk a little bit about the line structure of this particular molecule. One of the things that some students get tripped up on when they're looking at line structures like this is that they think that there's a carbon atom right here at the end of this line segment, and there isn't one there. In line structures, we show all of the bonds to every single atom except for the bonds to hydrogen atoms. So this bond that we're looking at right here, this is a bond between the carbon atom and the oxygen atom right here. There's no hidden carbon oxygen bond. So there can't be a carbon atom located at the end of this line because then that would mean that the carbon oxygen bond was being left out of the line structure and that's not allowed. So whenever you have a line that goes to an atom, like an oxygen atom in this case, or a nitrogen atom or whatever, don't think that there's a carbon atom hidden at the end of that line because there's not. This line is representing, in this case, the carbon oxygen bond. 